pre P3 stuff that I want to cover. So before we can design, we must know what we are designing for because P3 simply jumps ahead and says, uh, where's the P3? Produce an IoT system or device designed to solve a problem, including the architecture, standards, communication requirements, and security. It simply tells us that we need to produce a design. Now, in my opinion, I mean, this is where your teacher would obviously come in and explain things to you, but I'm going to try and explain as much as I can here. We have to know what we're designing for. So the only way for us to know what we're designing for is by reading the scenario. Now, your teachers, your lecturers can actually give you a completely different scenario or they can tweak the scenario a bit. But this is the one that was given to us by BTEC. So scenario, it says you have, uh, sorry, not you have received, you recently started work as an IT technician in the technical department of a small company that specializes in security systems and burglar alarms. The director of the company is interested in investigating if the company could make use of IoT technologies in its products and services, and your manager has asked you to develop a prototype system which uses this technology. The problem, the problem that the directors are keen to solve is that their current alarm simply rings an alarm bell when they detect an intruder. They would like the alarms to be able to notify the homeowner when an intruder is detected. Now, before I go any further, whilst reading scenarios, you as a designer stroke developer, you should try to pick out things that you know you need to do. So the first thing I picked out here was notification. Well, one of the first things was notification. Because at the moment, if something is happening, it simply rings a bell and the bell rings very loudly, but that doesn't really help the homeowner. They might not know. There might not be any neighbors. They're willing to call the police. No one might hear it. Something could be a miss and they have no idea them being notified then gives them the ability to actually say oh that person is not supposed to be there let's call 999 let's call the police so that's one of the benefits of this right so that's the scenario there now for specification we need to come up with a specification it's kind of been given to us in the scenario so all we need to do is to pull things out of the scenario that the client has specified that they want. So the specification normally comes from the client. They tell us, they specify, or they give us this list of requirements and we come up with a specification. Either way, it's perfectly fine. Um, here's a Google search on how to write a technical specification. So you can Google that and see how it's done. I would keep it simple, make it a list of things that need to be done. So. Here, I mentioned we need to do a notification. We should probably still do the bell thing. So we should have a buzzer or something beeping still. We need, we need to have some form of sensor which can detect when someone enters the room or when a door has been opened, something along those lines. And we should, yeah, just have a notification system. So I know that I'm going to probably need something that can either send an email, send a text message, send some form of notification. So I would make a list here and it would be, notify uh what was it home homeowners uh detect movement um maybe ring ring bell or buzzer or something along or it could even be a speaker to be fair because most of these microcontrollers nowadays they can actually run speakers or drive speakers perfectly okay so these are mainly the things that we need to focus on notify the homeowners detect movement or detect movement or something amiss it doesn't really matter how you word that ring the bell or buzzer and that's it now this is what's been specified that needs to be done we as a designer stroke developers need to now come up with a relatively sensible way to do these three things let me just move this down a bit let's put my example i was heading three i believe yep my example specification perfect so the purpose and scope of the system, I, you would normally do this, but I'm going to leave this out for now because we would normally speak to the client, find out what they need the system for, why they need the system, the things that they need the system to be able to do. But we've got this scenario already, but generally speaking, you would do this section. I'm going to jump straight down to where it says requirements, specification, and justification. You could have actually joined this entire section in here call it requirements specification and justification so we don't need to have a separate section called specification but i'm showing that section anyway so just again we don't need to have this as a separate section we could have done everything under one umbrella 
and down here we could have the list of things that need to be done first those are the requirements then we as the developer stroke designers we can then go and specify how we're going to do those things and the justification would be why we're doing those things so again what is required what are we going to uh, give or try to give based on what is required and why each option was chosen so I have a mini paragraph down here, but this is not the only way to do this again. I could have done a table as well. So I could have done a nice, easy table, gone to insert table and done something along the lines of this. And I could have said uh, requirements, specification and justification. So requirements, specification and justification. And I would simply put everything in here. So what is required? It is required. Uh, we can detect movement, detect movement. Now, this is a section where I leave it to you guys to decide what you want to do. I would say motion sensor. I would say maybe ultra, or did I put that here? Ultrasonic sensor. We could also do something like a laser emitter. So laser emitter and laser receiver. Now, what this is, is simply a beam of light being shone from one corner of the room, maybe on a door lock or a window lock to the other corner of the room. And once that beam is broken, once that light is no longer able to send that signal, we know that a door has been opened past a certain time, and that's it. The justification, we need to say why we've chosen these devices. Now, these are not the only devices that we can use. These are just the ones that pop into my mind straight away. And if I think of any more later on, I'll tell you guys as well. So again, motion sensor simply detects motion. It's called a PIR. It's a passive infrared sensor. And what it does, it detects the, the change in radiation of a certain area there's there are there are normally a couple of variables that we can play with and it's normally the time and the distance that we can play with so how far we can detect motion and how often that the, um, the sensor checks for motion as well justification is spelled wrong bear with me here uh, what else do we need to do so let's move down a couple detect movement um, ring ring buzzer or make make some audible noise you know what let's do make audible noise or make audible thing right and we can do buzzer these are just options i'm giving you you can actually go ahead and choose the one that you want we can do speaker and that's probably it to be fair buzzer stroke speaker and then make visible or make a visual thing i don't know how you would word that to be honest make visual uh notification so Again, I always like to design systems in the sense that even if you're not able to see with a visual aid, you can at least hear. And if you're not able to hear, you can see. So I would say flash some LEDs. So maybe we could use LEDs here or flash a light, um, some really bright light to make it very obvious what's going on. Uh, flash light or whatever we can decide to use. And the final thing we need to do is... Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Um, notify homeowners. So notify homeowners. And we can do that via email, via some form of app. It could even be a text message. And I think that should be okay. So I'm going to quickly go over the requirements. Let me just put this out. R-E-Q-U-I-R-E-M-E-N-T-S. Requirements at the very top. Uh, specification in the middle so we specify what we're going to use or what we're going to do in this case specify what we're going to use basically and then the justification is why are we going to use that thing now I'm not going to fill in the justification for me because I've listed multiple things here so you guys can decide what thing you're going to be using and then you can explain why that thing so for requirements I've said it detect movement or motion to be fair we could have a motion sensor, which is also known as a PIR, passive infrared sensor. Why would I choose this? It's a very, very cheap device. You can buy them on eBay for less than five pounds. You see them in bathrooms. They turn on the light automatically when someone comes to, um, to your front door sometimes. Very easy to integrate into a circuit and you can change values to make it suitable for what you want. And you can point it in a general area and it can detect movement. That's it justify so justify say why that component i could use an ultrasonic sensor no this is a bit of a weird one it's not very obvious why you would use this one but let, let me try and explain imagine you have a door that's closed and you have an ultrasonic sensor which is also a distance sensor maybe i should put that as well a distance sensor 
when the door is closed, if we have a distance sensor pointed at the door, because the door is closed and it's not moving unless it's super windy, it might move a millimeter or so, because the door isn't moving too much, we can more or less guess or measure, not guess, we can measure the distance from the, from the sensor to the door because it's closed, it's fixed. When that door opens, the distance is going to decrease or it could increase as well. The distance is going to decrease or increase. Now, once that distance decreases or increases, we know that door has been opened. The door might be opened, it might be kicked in, it might have been blown off by a hurricane. We don't really care. The door has been opened. Now, once a door has been opened, we can then ring our bell, or flash our alarm, and notify the user, whatever we want to do. So that's why I've put that one in there as well. It's not very obvious that you can use this, but I kind of like the idea of having options. So I would still make a list of all of these and then say, hmm, well, the one I'm going to use is... You know what, I'll go with the motion sensor because it's the typical one that most systems use. I'm all, I've am i also put in here laser emitter and laser receiver. This is probably what some people have on their houses now. So um, if you have a smart home alarm system at home, on the windows and doors, there might be a laser emitter and the laser receiver. And what it does, there's simply a beam being shunned from the emitter, that means giving off, and the laser receiver is simply picking up that beam. Once that beam is not broken, once that beam is okay, then no alarm. But once the beam is broken, and especially if it goes past a certain time, so let's say it's 9 p.m., 10 p.m., the beam's broken, no one should be in that area because it's an office building, for example, then the alarm should go off. So those are the things that you could use and those are the justifications of them. Um, make an audible sound, not an audible noise. Noise is already audible and even sound is as well, make an audible thing. I'm just going to leave it as thing for now, right? Buzzer or speaker. Very simple. Buzzers are obvious. Um, they're cheap. They're obvious signs of danger for most people, depending on the tone of the buzzer. Speakers, we could have an actual voice saying, intruder alert, intruder alert. You should not be in this area, whatever the case is, right? So it's easy to incorporate these things into your system. And why would you do this? You would have visual and audio aids to, to ensure that if someone is blind, right? If you're blind, you cannot see, but you should be able to. You might be able to hear what's going on and then you can raise an alarm if necessary and vice versa. If you are, whatever I said, um, if you are deaf, you, you can't hear, but at least you, you can see the lights flashing and know that something is amiss. That's why I have LEDs and flashlight here. And finally, we have email, or sorry, notify homeowners. We can email them. That's probably the easiest one, I would say. We can link our thing to an app that gives them a notification. Probably going to be the hardest one. And text message, probably the second easiest one. Email, then text, and maybe app, I would say. Personally, for this level project, I would go email or text. I would mention that app is an option, but it's just such a, a very hard option to use that I wouldn't even bother. So these are the things that I would do pre-P3. So before we even get to P3, these are the things that we need to know. These are the things that we need to be able to speak on. You can still label it P3. That's not a problem. P3 is just going to be slightly longer because now we have to actually go in and produce a system design. But again, we have to know what we're designing for before we can design. So now we know what the client wants. Now we have some idea of what we can actually use to give the client what they want because we have the devices here and we can also justify why we're using the device that we're using. So hopefully that was helpful. Hopefully that made some sense. And the next part is going to be P3. And P3, we need to design. Uh, we're going to design in thinking about architecture, standards, communication requirements, and security, but mainly focused on uh, the typical design things like UML diagrams, we could use pseudocode, we could use flowchart, we could use just a paragraph or bullet points describing how the system should work. But we need to focus on the architecture of the system, the standards, communication requirements, and security. So we're going to come in and define all of these first and then see how we design for that. Good luck. And I'll, you guys will see me in the next part.